Ok, so check this out. In an index.ts file, I'm exporting a function called fetch which accepts a couple of arguments and returns a promise. Inside the function, I'm simply returning a response object containing a text message and then, in a terminal window, I'm running npm run deploy. After a few seconds and some magic happening in the background, we get a public URL which, when accessed, returns the greetings message I defined a minute earlier. Pretty impressive, right? If your dev journey started fairly recently, this might not look like much, but for old farts like me who still remember the first release of the AWS EC2 instances, setting up servers and environments, doing manual deploys and other dev work, pushing code to the edge with just a few keystrokes is mind-blowing. In this video, we'll look into Cloudflare workers, the tech solution which makes all this possible, we'll discuss some other alternatives such as Dino Deploy, and we'll take a closer look at how Node.js and the new generation of JavaScript frameworks built and optimized for running on the edge. Before we get to writing some code, let's quickly discuss the idea of deploying code on the edge. You should be familiar at this point to the concept of content delivery networks, or in short, CDNs. In just a few words, this is a distributed cluster of servers and data centers hosted all over the world with the goal of providing high availability and performance by bringing code as close as possible to the end user. For a long time, this was the preferred hosting solution for static files such as images, CSS rules, and JavaScript files. So, while your backend app runs on an EC2 server hosted in Europe, a United States user accessing your app from the West Coast could fetch files from a closer US West location. The distance that needs to be traveled by the bytes over the wire is smaller, the latency decreases, and your app performs better since you are able to shave off a few hundreds of milliseconds. While CDN features and performance were getting better and better, inside the AWS team another idea started to form, serverless computing and lambda functions. Conceptually, this was straightforward. Since we know that the devs are running code in EC2 instances, why aren't we abstracting that away and allow them to run that code in a service that automatically manages the resources needed to run it? Fast forward a few years to 2000 2018, when Cloudflare, a company known for its state-of-the-art content delivery network and DDoS solutions, introduced Cloudflare workers. This builds on top of the previous knowledge and allows developers to run code in an environment that auto-scales while benefiting from deployments in a high-performance global network of data centers running on V8 instances. In short, following the example of delivering static files, your backend code is brought as close as possible to the user. Of course, Cloudflare is not alone in this space. Serverless platforms such as Vercel or Netlify are also also offering edge deployments capabilities. However, the most notable and promising alternative might be the Dino ecosystem. For those unfamiliar with it, Dino is a JavaScript runtime environment built as a more mature and secure version of Node. On top of the environment itself, the Dino team came up with Dino Deploy, a service allowing you to push your TypeScript code to the edge by simply pressing a couple of buttons. Combine this convenience with frameworks such as Fresh and Wasm support and you will end up with a recipe for success. I have a couple of Dino videos on this channel if you are interested in that and now let's get back to setting up our Cloudflare workers environment. You'll need an up-to-date node version and then you can globally install Wrangler, the CLI tool we'll use for both development and deployment purposes. Once you have the library installed, make sure to log in into your Cloudflare account and link it to your CLI environment. If you don't have an account with Cloudflare yet, you can easily set up one for free. Once you are done with that, you also have to go through the process of creating a Cloudflare worker public subdomain where your code can be published. The setup is straightforward and it shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes to go through the wizard steps. As a quick side note, I find it pretty funny that they chose the earth as the region of your deployment. This is to underline the fact that your code will run in all Cloudflare data centers and you don't have to worry about various regions and availability zones. Next, simply run the Wrangler init command to initialize your first worker and we are ready to go. Inside the project there is an index.js file which contains a fetch method and which is the main entry point into our app. Note that the project comes with TypeScript support out of the box which, these days, it's pretty much the norm. So we can publish this code to the edge with a one-line command, but I'd like to work on something a bit more concrete than a hello world. Enter Hono.js, an extremely fast web framework specially created to run on edge-enabled platforms such as the Cloudflare workers. So let's npm install it in our project and then we'll jump into a newly created api.ts file to finally write some code. Since Cloudflare workers are exposed at a public URL, the easiest way to interact with any type of functionality is via HTTP requests. Hono provides the necessary tools to create a state of the art REST API following all the current standards. It provides built-in and custom middleware, so for instance we can easily load a logging module in our app. As a first step, let's simply register an event listener on the root path of our domain. Whenever this path is accessed, we'll simply send back some plain text as a response. Back in the index.ts file, in the original fetch method, we can call the fetch method our Hono app exposes. You'll notice that this code is pretty repetitive and we'll clean this up in just a second by exporting the Hono app directly. In the terminal, we can make an HTTP request to test that everything is working
working as expected. Ok, next we'll work on creating some REST API handlers for some basic create, read, update or delete actions. I have quite a few videos on building REST APIs with both JavaScript tools and with more quote unquote serious tools such as Spring and Kotlin. If you are not familiar with some of the complexity involved in building APIs, check out some of those videos. For this example, however, it's important to know that we'll not get into details such as validation or security, even though these are important topics in any REST implementation. However, Hono comes back with existing middleware to handle these common scenarios and we'll look at some of them briefly in a couple of minutes. If you worked with web frameworks in the past, you probably know that routing, mapping existing URLs and extracting parameters is a pretty big deal. Hono offers all the support you need here and relies on an efficient router implementation which ensures efficient URL mappings for all your endpoints. On top of that, it provides simple to use solutions for error handling so you can easily customize scenarios such as the resource not found situation or various exceptions that might be thrown on the server side when your code is running. Using the appropriate error codes is always important since this is one of the main mechanisms your API uses to correctly communicate results to the clients. In real world situations, you should always spend the time to plan for the worst and correctly cover scenarios that might go wrong. We are simply logging the error to the console here, but in production, you could attempt to perform the operations again, send notification messages to the monitoring system and even revert actions if this request was linked to some sort of more complex transaction. When developing projects at scale, depending on the business logic you are working on, you might end up with tens or hundreds of entities and, automatically, with even more endpoints to cover all these objects. Even though I'm not a fan of early optimizations for the sake of it, it's always a good idea to structure your code accordingly and group endpoints based on their domain. In our case, I created a new users.ts file which will contain all the REST endpoints the client can access to read, update, create or delete users. All this grouping is done under the user's object, which is just a Hono instance we can append to the app router. Inside handlers, we can use the well-known JavaScript request and response objects, since Hono uses the web API. The context object is pretty powerful and flexible, and provides a lot of convenience methods for things such as adding response headers for instance. We can also chain path handlers to better outline that some methods are linked to specific domain instances. Another important aspect of developing REST APIs is validating the data received from customers. Not doing this in a correct manner could not be just a source of potential software errors in the future, but also a security risk since malicious users could end up running code on your system if not properly validated. To alleviate this common problem to some extent, Hono provides the validator middleware you could use to perform at least some basic checks against the user provided data. So you can see that Hono is not really coming with anything conceptually new in the realm of web frameworks, but it provides a great opportunity for you to use the programming skills you already know and deploy your code smarter in a more efficient manner.